Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem minimum time to make rope colorful. We're given n balloons and each balloon has a particular color which is given to us in the form of a string of characters where each character represents a different color. We don't really care about the mapping like for example if A maps to blue that really doesn't matter to us it just matters that A and B and C are different colors that's all we care about so don't even consider like the color itself it doesn't matter. Now the problem is, suppose we're given some colors like this, A, B, A, A, C. In this case, we have two consecutive A's here. We do not want any adjacent characters to be the same. So we have to eliminate certain characters from the string such that that does not occur. So we could remove this A, or we have another choice, we could remove this A. In this problem, we want to return the minimum amount of time it takes to make the rope colorful. And we get the time from actually a second input variable, which is an array. For each of these characters, we have a particular time. So it could be like this. These times represent the amount of time it would take for us to pop each balloon or basically to remove each character. So now the choice becomes pretty obvious. Which one of these A's should we eliminate? If we want to minimize the time, we should pick the one with the smaller needed time. So let's pop this one. So it only takes us three time units. I don't know if this is seconds or minutes. I guess actually it's seconds, but who cares? It takes us three to make this a colorful rope. This time it's pretty obvious, but we might end up with inputs that are a lot harder. Think of it like this. Maybe we have a long stretch of A's and like a B and a C on the ends. And at this point you might be thinking, well, if we have many, many choices to make, is it possible that we can solve this problem with backtracking? Maybe we can optimize it with some dynamic programming. And before you go down these rabbit holes too far, Let's actually think about this for a second. If we have a long stretch of A's, we really don't have that many choices actually. Like we don't need to make a really big decision tree because in reality, we have four very simple choices. We have four A's here, four consecutive A's, but we know we can't have more than one consecutive A. So our choice really is we keep this A or we keep this A, or we keep this A, or we keep this A. In other words, we only keep one of them. So those are the four choices. And in terms of making the choice optimal, again, it's not super complicated. If we just had some values, I'm just giving random values here, one, two, three, four, obviously we're gonna keep the A with the smallest needed time. We don't even need to go down backtracking or dynamic programming. This problem can be solved pretty easily being greedy. Now, in terms of how I'm actually gonna implement the solution, I'm not gonna really think of it in terms of just choosing which one of these has the smallest needed time and just keeping that one. I think we could do it that way, but in terms of coding it up, it's probably easier to do it this way. Anytime we encounter two adjacent characters that are the same, we have to eliminate one of them. And which one are we gonna eliminate? The one with the smaller needed time, which makes me kind of realize that I got the explanation for the other part wrong. For example, if we had one, two, three, four, we'd keep the one with the largest needed time because we'd have to eliminate all the other three with a smaller needed time. Sorry about that. Yeah, back to this explanation. Of course, we're going to eliminate the one with the smaller needed time. And it works for us to just compare the adjacent equal values because even if we eliminate one, next we're gonna look at these two, they're both the same too, we're gonna have to eliminate one of them. This time, maybe instead of eliminating the left one, we end up eliminating this other one. And in that case, we would then compare these two, which technically aren't adjacent in the input string, but the fact that we've deleted this one does make them adjacent. Adjacent. So we would continue the comparison and then eliminate one of them until only one of them is left. So that's why it works out just to compare adjacent characters. But you might notice that since the pointers 
aren't necessarily going to be adjacent in the string, we might have to do some pointer manipulation. And the way I'm going to handle that is by using the two pointer technique, a left pointer and a right pointer. So just to quickly allow you to visualize this, imagine that the two pointers start like this at the beginning of the string. We compare, they're not the same. So then we shift both pointers. Now they're here. Now they're both the same. So we eliminate one. Suppose we eliminate this one. Okay. Now we shift both of the pointers again left pointers here, right pointers here. This one was eliminated. Now we compare again. Suppose this time we remove the one here. This time right pointer is shifted, but the left pointer would stay the same. And now suppose we eliminate this one. And this time the left pointer is not shifted by one. It's actually placed where the right pointer is. And then the right pointer is always shifted by one. So that's how the pointer manipulation will work. And just keep in mind that we are going to be totaling up the time and returning it. So for every one of these that we eliminate, we would add to the total time and then return that in the output. This way, since we're just going through the input string, with the two pointer technique, the time complexity is obviously big O of n, where n is the size of the input. And memory complexity, we only have a couple variables, so that is going to be constant. Now let's code this up. Just to start with a couple comments, and this will pretty much allow us to solve the problem pretty easily. I'm going to, uh, before we get into the two pointer stuff, initialize the result to zero. This is the total time. And I'm also just going to initialize the left pointer on the same line because it's easy to do that. I don't initialize the right pointer because because that is what we're going to use for the for loop. And this time we're going to start at one because the left pointer is at index zero. So the right pointer should be one ahead of that. And we're going to go for the length of colors, which is the same size as the needed time array. Before we fill that in, we already know we're going to return the result. So let's write that down there. There's just one case that we really need to check for. If the two adjacent colors are the same. So if the color at the left is equal to the color at the right, else we will consider what we do there in a bit. But first we check, are they the same? Okay, now we check, well, which one has a smaller needed time? Is it the left one? If needed time of left is less than needed time at right, then we will add to the result the needed time of the left one. Let me retype that. Otherwise, we will add to the result the needed time of the right one. Last thing to worry about is the pointer manipulation. So if we have the left one with a smaller needed time, that means we're eliminating the left one. That means we should probably shift the left pointer. It should probably be shifted to where the right pointer now is. But in the else case, if we're eliminating the right one and not the left one, the left pointer should probably stay the same. So that's the pointer manipulation in this block. Now, what do we do in the else block? If two adjacent characters are not the same, we're not really gonna do anything. We're just gonna shift our pointers by one and that's it. So the right pointer is already being shifted by one each time. The left pointer should probably match the right pointer. So just like we put here, the left pointer will be placed where the right pointer is rather than incrementing it by one because we know there might be a hole in the array. Like we might have eliminated a balloon. So we don't want to end up shifting this by one and then landing on that eliminated balloon. So we just shift it to where the right pointer is. So that's the whole code. Now let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.